Look at that plant. I want you to know that everything was grown in my garden. Don't touch that plant! Is it poisonous? She'll become part of the plant. Hi, everyone, and welcome to Flower Power Garden Hour. I'm your host, Marlene, and today I have some guests that are going to hopefully make gardening much easier for some of us. And I get a lot of questions, and I get a lot of questions from new gardeners who are often confused about the information that they find online, in books, everywhere. Um, and even expert gardeners, we still need help. Of course, I'm, you know, still learning. And that's what I love about gardening. So with me are the uh, developers and founders of an app. And don't roll your eyes. I know gardening apps. <laughs> but this one, trust me, is pretty darn cool. So it has my approval. And they are Dale and Carrie Spoonmore. And they have developed uh, an app called Seed to Spoon. And joining me is Kelly. She is the CEO and president of Park Seed. And she and their company loved the app so much that they actually purchased it. So I'm talking to the three of them about how this app got developed, what you guys can expect from it, what's going to um, make your life as a gardener much easier. So um, all three of you, thanks for joining me. Thank you so much for having us. Hey, Marlene, it's nice to meet you. Thanks for having us. Yeah, we were talking Hi. a little bit um, before we started recording. And the first thing I even brought up was, Oh, gosh, you developed an app all on your own coding. <laughs> um, so tell me a little bit about both of your your backgrounds in gardening and how you just decided one day, a few weeks to start developing an app and how that came about. Yeah, so I'll try and tell the story as briefly as I can. It's a bit of a long story because it really starts like right out of high school for me. I started working at a software company in tech support, and then I worked in testing for a while, and then I was a product manager for a long time. So I was around apps and code for a very long time, and that was kind of how I saw the world. So when I got obsessed with gardening in 2015, I think it was a natural progression where um, I'm, I'm hyper OCD about organization. I'm, I'm on the spectrum and I have spreadsheets for everything in my life and spreadsheets didn't cut it when it came to gardening. I felt like there needed to be an app that could make it easier to do some of these things from a device because spreadsheets aren't always the easiest thing to, to mess with while you're out on a device and then you're limited in what you could do. And I had reached the limits of what you could do with a spreadsheet with my gardening spreadsheet. So that was really where it started was we started gardening in 2015 and like anything in my life that I get hooked on, I get really obsessed and gardening has been one of those things since we started. And if you go to our website at seed2spoon.net, that's T-O spoon, um, you can see a before and after of our backyard of kind of when we started and then what happened just a, a year or two later. And um, that was really what got us hooked. And by 2017, we had started a YouTube channel where we were talking about some of this stuff and, and just kind of showing how we were growing food. And uh, we were getting a lot of people that were asking questions about how to grow where they lived and things like that. So um, I got with some of my developer friends and they helped me get uh, set up with how to start an app. and. I started the initial versions on my own, and then a few months later, we brought on some friends um, that are amazingly talented developers, and we just kind of ran from there. And this app was released in uh, 2018, and we've been working on it nights and weekends ever since with full-time jobs. And then now with this opportunity with Park Seed, we're able to work on it full-time and it's a dream come true. It's just, uh, it still doesn't feel real and I don't know if it ever will. And I don't hope that it ever will, honestly. <laughs> well, I mean, that's a pretty quick, you know, transition from not gardening to gardening and all of a sudden having your garden out. But I think your background sort of, uh, was conducive for that. Cause you're like, oh, I'm a totally organized person, spreadsheets, and I am the complete opposite gardener. I don't even remember what I planted where. And, and you know, every year I'm like, I'm going to get better. I'm going to get better. So, you know, I'm sure the app will help people who are, you know, unorganized gardeners like myself. But Carrie, are you OCD in that way too? Or do you just sort of like, I enjoy the gardening part and I'll let him do all the detail <laughs> work? I'm I'm not quite as OCD yeah. as he is. Yeah. Usually, <laughs> but, usually you don't find people who are you know th that that would be a 
that would be it. Usually that you balance yourself out in a relationship. Yeah. Yeah. I, I'd say we're a really good balance together. We work really well together. So, But you also have four kids. Right. Yes, and four and a half actually. Oh, okay. Yeah. All right. Congrats. Oh my gosh. Oh my. Literally God. a half. Yeah. At the halfway point this week. Yeah. So okay. Four and a half. Okay. Uh, so you guys, where do you live? Where do you live back? Oklahoma City. Oklahoma City. Okay. So you guys started gardening and the YouTube, which, I, God bless you for doing YouTube because I can't get YouTube videos up to save my life. It's like, oh, I'm going to. But yeah, as soon as you put information out, people are wanting to know more and more things. So what I like about this app is that as soon as you click on something, so I guess we should say that this is, you know, it, it's vegetable, but not just vegetable because I, I saw on there that there was um, a bee balm, which is a beautiful flower, but of course it's, you know, culinary. So there's a lot of crossover when you have edibles. So for people who are like, oh, I don't grow vegetables, there's lavender in there. There's a lot of floral stuff in there. But what I like about it was when you type in a plant, it automatically, it pops up where you're at and all the information for where you're at, correct? That's right. Our first goal in building the app was to build an app that would calculate planting dates based on your nearest weather station. So that was one of the first things that we built. So we have a database of all the national weather, the, the, the NOAA weather stations. I think that's the right abbreviation. Um, but and so we use that and find your, the one that's closest to you. And then we have that last 100 years of freeze data that we can calculate the, the most probable freeze date. Now, so you know how it is with gardening. It's not always uh -huh. 100% right. <laughs> that's why we put a range in there. Yeah. That's a bit of a buffer on each side of what yours is. So all those dates are calculated based for anywhere in the United States. Yeah. And then also along with the um, information. So, you know, it's it's when to plant because, you know, for us, we're able to grow a winter crop. But, you know, I'm talking to people and they're like, well, you're harvesting your cauliflower and Brussels sprouts where we're not even able to plant ours. So, you know, I have a friend who's a gardener and he's like, gardening is so regional. So that's what's great about this app is anyone wherever can use it versus when you do go on like a lot of sites and you're like, well, wait a minute, that doesn't pertain to my zone at all. So um, if people are afraid of, oh, well, you know, I can't trust information, but it was developed you know, in the Midwest, um, that's not the case here because you're able to tap into all that historical data and the weather station. So um, because timing and planting is so key. Exactly. And then the big thing that we're building now with Garden Plus, and I'll get more into this later, but we really want to expand that so that we send reminders based on some of those things. So reminders for wind to water based on how much it's rained and things like that. That's where we're moving towards. And we can talk about that when we get later on. But that's the big direction we're heading. Yeah. So so who, um, you know, you decide, OK, it's ed edibles. Why is it sort of important? And, and I know you guys have um, four and a half kids. So is that sort of the idea that you sort of want to get everyone gardening because it's, is that how you guys began gardening a healthy lifestyle? You're, you're wanting your kids to know where the food came from. I know that's a big reason why a lot of parents garden. Yeah. It, the reason why we got into gardening all came down to food. I've battled anxiety and depression my entire life and gardening, spending time in the garden and eating food that came out of the garden dramatically helped me. And it and it's helped so many people that I know with various ailments. That's why we have our Growing for Health feature to focus on that. So that's why everything in our app is focused on things that you can either eat or use medicinally. So as we expand plants, we're going to expand in that direction, which pretty much every plant has some sort of a medicinal use. Yes. So I think we've got a, a, broad, a broad brush we can paint with. And... Um, some of the challenge in the past was that it used to take us a whole day to add a plant into the app. Well, some of the early work that we've done since coming on full time is building a really nice admin app for Carrie to be able to add plants way faster. So those are the kind of things we're going to be expanding. And you'll see a lot of new plants and things like that real soon. So, um, Carrie, are you so you're in charge of saying, hey, let's let's add this plant or I, I researched or I grew this plant. Let's go ahead and add it. Is that your. Yeah. Yeah, in the beginning, like I was just going off of everything that we planted at first. And then I started just expanding based on people's recommendations. I mean, we get countless emails every day uh, from people asking, you know, can you add this plant? Can you add that plant? So we have a big long list going now. Yeah. So there's over 100 right now, 
correct? Yes. Is that correct? Okay. And it's growing, like you said, every single day. And it, and it's not just the plants. It's not just the planting time. But one area that I really like is what the heck attacks this? Because everyone freaks out, as you know, when anything goes wrong on their plant or there's one little nibble on it. Um, so it's nice to just be able to click on it and go, okay, what are the possibilities of something eating? You know, you have the whole thing on cabbage looper, which is great because our winter crops, that's pretty much, it's just, you know, cabbage aphids and the cabbage looper. Those are pretty much going to be your your problem winter crops for us here. So it's just nice that if someone has like, oh, I, I, I can get a click and see what pests, and then it gives you how to control them. Um, and you guys, of course, are doing everything organically. Is that correct? Yes. Yeah, we, we do everything organic in our garden because that's because it's what we're going to be eating. Mm -hmm. And we want to make sure that we're in charge of what goes in us and all that. Yeah. So, um, Kelly, I want to I want to loop you into this, too. How did you hear about this app? And, you know, Park Seed's been around. Give us a little history about Park Seed because they've been around. I mean, I've been gardening since I was six. So that's almost I hate to say it almost 40 years <laughs> <laughs> well, my um, gosh, we've got that in common. We've got that in common, Arlene. I, um, you know, I helped my grandmother with vegetable gardens um, when I was younger. Okay. And so you could say, uh, you know, if I was doing it when I was six, I was probably doing it about 40 years ago as well. Woohoo! Um, <laughs> woo uh, and, you know, my grandmother's passion for gardening and growing, it was just, it was what we did. She grew up on a farm. Um, she brought that mentality to the city. Um, I grew up in a city, just a suburb of Minneapolis, and she turned her backyard into this amazing vegetable garden. And it was what we as the grandkids looked forward to doing with grandma. Oh. We we planted, we harvested, we did canning, um, we did all of it. And it was such an amazing experience to grow up with. And I have an eight-year-old and it is, you know, what I want her to experience as well. And I have fits and starts with it. I don't think I got my grandmother's green thumb, but it's not stopping me. Um, I keep trying. I keep trying, but I would say it's not my signature strength yet, but well, that's okay. And that's what I tell people all the time. I mean, I work at a university uh, botanical conservatory where we have incredibly rare, you know, unusual plants that, you know, we may only have a few left in the world. Luckily, we don't kill those, but I'm like, yeah. we kill plants all the time. You're going to kill plants. That's one, how you learn, and it's just going to happen. So when people are, you know, I tell them I, I kill plants, they're like, really? I'm like, yeah. I joke, I push a cart through the uh, greenhouse going, bring out your dead, bring out your dead, <laughs> you know? <laughs> so, you know, things happen. I mean, when you have so many plants or, you know, nature, I mean, we got incredibly late frost uh, two days ago. And, yeah. you know, it, it wiped out some plants. Um, but I, th I think it's interesting that uh, you had the background with your grandma gardening. Almost every single person I have on the podcast has at least their mom or their grandparents who sort of almost, I'll use the word, cultivated that yes. at least respect for gardening. Even if it's a, it's a hobby you, you stopped doing or you picked it up later, it's still that respect. And I just want to ask, in the yeah. backyard... Were there, so your grandparents, so you're about my age and I'm trying to think of my grandparents. It was like fifties and sixties. And I know all like they're canning their own food. And all I hear about from my mom is how that's all they ate was store-bought canned food because canned food was like a new thing. So um, I, I think that's amazing that you're, you're, you know, you were around actual canning of it. So, oh yeah, absolutely. Um, that, that was, a, that's an event in and of itself, you know, and um, I, I love what you said about um, it's okay, it's okay to kill a plant. Um, it's, you know, that's what my daughter and I are working on, right? Yeah. Because we don't have the big backyard garden yet, but when we're growing in a smaller space, everyone that dies, you see. Yeah. <laughs> and you have a big backyard garden it's you can turn up turn an eye to to the one in the corner that's not doing so well but um you know that's my personal journey as you mentioned park seeds we've been around right since 1868 this has been a brand that's been passionate about 
um, customer success and the, the journey of supporting gardeners and growers. Um, and, and that's what Park Seed is still doing today. Mm-hmm. Park Seed started as a catalog company, a magazine. It grew into a catalog. Then it had a website. Um, the goal has always been to be available for growers when they're ready and in the channels that they want to learn and shop in. So the app was, you know, that's the next natural step for us. Um, you know, you asked the question of how did I, what, what tipped me off to this app? Um, on a Saturday morning, um, back in probably 2020, I would guess, I was perusing Instagram and I was perusing gardening and and not for work, but because I was thinking, okay, how, what can I do with my daughter, right? How can I get her into this? And I came across from seed to spoon. And I think, you know, if they tracked back on their Instagram followers, I was, I probably started following them somewhere around that time. And I started just watching their journey and um, admiring it from afar. And then, you know, fall of 2021, I got the courage to reach out to them on a Saturday morning when I was back on Instagram and having my morning coffee and just said, hey, would love to connect and and talk about how we might partner. And we hopped on a call right away. Um, They responded right away. I think we connected that next Monday or so. And um, I, the conversation was so authentic. And we started talking about what our goals were personally and professionally around gardening. And from my perspective, there was just a connection and a synergy and just this shared vision for the future. And so we continued the conversation and, and which led to the acquisition. All right. I mean, I, I love success stories like that. People who are, aren't necessarily in it for obviously, you know, um, any reason except for you wanted to make gardening easier for yourself and you didn't like your yeah. spreadsheets. So, I mean, there's nothing more yeah. authentic than I got to be organized and I'm going to do this app and I want to help people who who are new to gardening or, like I said, even experienced gardeners could could benefit from it. So um, I know there's you uh, Park Seed wants to, you know, even even grow it even more um and it sounds like Dale and Carrie, you you are going to be involved in this 100. percent Is that correct? Oh, this is our 100 percent life now. It's okay. so exciting. Yeah, that yeah, is and exciting. It's us and our team too. We've got a team of developers and a business analysts. We are full throttle, rocking and rolling. It's so much fun. So, so what are what are the um, the future plans? I know there you want to expand a bit on it. Um, what are some things that you, we we could see in the future with it for those? who are uh, going to join it. So if you look at Garden Plus right now, it is just a, a glimpse of where we're heading. Um, so right now it lets you log plants, it lets you log events, log notes, add photos, like organize everything at that level. We are going to be building on, to, on top of that um, massively over the next few months. So you're going to see things like adding the ability to add custom plants instead of only being able to choose things from our list. You're going to see a lot of new plants coming in. You're going to see um, just some features reworked after, you know, we've had it out as a free preview for uh, over a year now. Pretty much when COVID started, we put it out as a free preview. It's been out as a free preview ever since. So um, you're going to see all the feedback that we've heard, uh, you know, we've got it, everything indexed and we're working on everything based on how much everyone has sent things in and everything like that. So you're going to see so many features coming in on Garden Plus, and that's really where we're going to be expanding. So just to give you a few specifics, like reminders, like I mentioned earlier, based on what, how much it's, uh, how much it's rained, um, but also reminders for when to fertilize, reminders for when it's time to plant. Um, calendar features, uh, all of those type of things are where we're heading. And and we're going to be listening to users along the way. So if we get feedback about something that um, becomes a a new priority, that's that may be somewhere we head. And then our ultimate goal of where we want to get to eventually is to have a visual editor where you can draw out your garden, you can go in and place labels and things like that. Um, that's the eventual goal of where we want to get to, but there's a lot of other things that we're going to be doing first, but I'm very excited for the opportunity to be working on it full time because it's been hard to balance nights and weekends with four kids and full-time jobs and everything else. I I can imagine. So it almost sounds like it's an individualized, um, 
database for a gardener, but with it already set up. And it's just a, a very easy uh, interface, user interface. That's yes, the goal is to completely replace the journal. Okay. No one needs a journal. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So you so you're I mean, everyone has their phone with them out in the garden. I mean, that's I, I listen to uh true crime podcasts way too much while I'm gardening. But <laughs> you know, then it's nice to just be able to pull out your phone and look at a plant and go, you know, when did I plant this? Um, is it supposed to be looking like this? Do I need to fertilize it? When should I prune it? Um or even like like I was mentioning the pests. So I think that's, you know, the apps on the phone, since everyone has their phone with them, just makes sense. I had a friend years ago, she carried around this binder with her of everything. And I'm like, how big is that binder going to get? <laughs> you know, She's like lugging this binder with all of her garden. And I'm like, OK, that's not going to really help. But, you know, your phone, it's it's so nice. Um, but it, you also have because it's an edible uh, food app, and but also medicinal. Um, there's recipes, correct? My, I, did I see some recipes on there? Yeah. 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 There's recipes for each plant. Okay. And that's helpful too, because I'm a gardener. I don't necessarily like cook. My cooking is what did I harvest from the garden, put it in one pan with olive oil and salt, and there it is. And that's pretty <laughs> much all I do. I mean, it's, you know, it's great because I you know, it's fresh vegetables, but it's nice for people who like are clueless when in the kitchen like me. So I like that. There's we have fun experimenting and trying new recipes, especially with the kids too. Uh -huh. So it gets them involved. And so most everything is kid approved that we have in there also. Okay. That's good. That's especially good. The zucchini recipes. I will tell you, we have like countless summer squash recipes and the kids love them. She oh, went that's wild good. with summer squash recipes. I really summer. did. Oh, well, I that's so good. I, I need yeah. those because as you know, those plants produce a lot and you're like, what else yes. can I do with this? Yeah. We had a huge like mound in the kitchen and we were like, what can we do with these? So we started making like zucchini pizza bites Ooh. and zucchini grilled cheese and like so many different things. Oh, that's fun. Not zucchini ice yeah. cream yet though. That's, that's good. Yeah. <laughs> we did do zucchini brownies. I will say oh, those okay. were really good. Okay. Yeah. The All kids right. love them. They still ask for them. I'm like, we don't have zucchini yet. We'll yeah. Have to wait. What is, what do you, th and I'm sort of just throwing this out there, but what is probably the strangest edible that's on the site? Do you think? Hmm. Strangest? I know. I'm just what? throwing that out there because I grow, I <laughs> like, I like to grow just unusual, crazy things. And so I'm always like, oh, I wonder what other crazy things people are growing. Um, Puerto Rican cilantro, Rao Ram. Oh, Okay. It's something a lot of people aren't familiar yeah. with. It's a cilantro replacement, and it's sweeter than cilantro. It likes the shade and it likes the heat, so it's good to be out in the summer. But it doesn't; it can't handle the direct sun that much. It's meant to be like under a, under a tree or something. Well, that's actually really um, good because people. Uh, so cilantro for us is one of those that you would grow like March and April, and then the heat yeah. comes yes. and it just dies, and then people always in nurseries sell it. You know the wrong time of year and they put it next to the peppers and the tomatoes because people want to make their salsa. And so exactly. that's nice that there's one that will tolerate the heat. Um, shade's fine. Yeah, I, mean, I just realized, I'm sorry. I just realized I, I messed up the name. There's two different, like, so the one that I said, Rao Ram, that's the Vietnamese cilantro. Okay. Uh, that is another one that does well. We have heat. both there's, of them in the two, app. There's okay. two different... Also, so. <laughs> so if someone Sorry, just that, that, that yeah that's fine I, I already forgot what you said anyways I'm like oh what did you say I'm gonna have to go back um so basically though if someone were to type in cilantro would that pop up yes okay. all three will show perfect pop up okay cilantro. see yeah that's perfect people like I want you know a cilantro um Kelly I, I know that what one of the um um sort of additions to the the app is if people want to buy you know, these seeds or the beneficials or yellow sticky traps. Um, it's it's basically an all stop. Um, everything's in right there in the app, correct? It's all there. Yes. Yes. So from the app, um, you know, if there's a seed that you want to experiment with, you can click uh, to purchase that seed right from the app. You can also um get your growing supplies as needed. And Dale and the team work 
I mean, it's amazing the work that they are able to accomplish, but every, with every release, the shopping experience is getting easier and, and becomes more seamless. And the goal is really that, you know, you've got that app and you don't need to leave the app. It's all right there. Um, and you'll be able to plan your garden, make purchases for your garden, support what you need through the app. That's great. I mean, that's nice because people just want that. And, you know, I, I am going to throw something out too. So, you know, a lot of gardeners I work with, they're older. It's even just um, difficult for them to even, you know, sometimes, you know, when I'm like, oh, can you email me? Oh, I don't email, you know, let me have my grandson um, do yeah. that for me. This would be easy for, um, you know, someone to install for them and just say, hey, go here. You could do everything here. You can do everything, everything there. there. Yes. So I, I like that. Maybe I'll I'll uh, show it to my father in law because he's he's definitely uh, technically challenged that that way. So in this way, because he's always like, "Oh, where'd you get that? Where'd you get that?" I'm like, "Oh, I bought it. Oh, that's right. You don't do anything." Yeah. Um, so yeah, I, I like that. It's just all, everything's there. So what are some um, new seeds, new varieties, Kelly, that we could expect from Park Seeds that? Um, you know, one will be on the app, but to that uh, park seed is is selling and introducing. Yeah, that's a great question. I mean, we are we are always looking for what's new, what's different. You know, what are consumers going to be interested in? But then also, what can we introduce and bring forward um, that may that may inspire someone to grow something new? But one of um, one of the varieties we are really excited about is the straight eight organic cucumber. So this is an AAS award winner um, and it is great to eat fresh, but also for canning. So, you know, it is one when you, when I go back to the canning journey, right? Um, <laughs> this is, here we go, right? So this is yeah. one to get really excited about. And Carrie talked about squash and I think uh, Marlene, you talked about maybe the butter baby organic squash already, but mm -hmm. that's another one we are really excited about, which produces the personal sized butternut squash. Um, so this one will be incredibly popular as well. Um, those are just a few. Uh, Dale and Carrie, you are experimenting with quite a few seeds right now. Which ones are you most excited about? I am excited about pretty much anything that is colorful. <laughs> Anything purple. So there oh. is a cauliflower graffiti that has this beautiful purple cauliflower. And I am so excited about this one. I can't I can't tell you how excited I am. It's also supposed to be easier because yeah. you, you don't have to worry about keeping the, the head, the you don't have to wrap it or anything. Like the purple is fine to be out exposed to the sun. So it's yeah. supposed to be an easier cauliflower to grow. So yeah, that and then there's rainbow bell peppers. I can't mm -hmm. remember the exact name. The cayenne ones too. Yes, cayenne rainbow. Yeah. Pretty much anything like that. It gets the kids really excited, also, and me. We're all really excited about those. And then there's an early variety that they have. That's a park early. What's the name of it? Do you remember the season starter? That's supposed to be really oh, fast, yeah, like tomato. a 55 day tomato. Mm, so yes. I'm going to see if I can grow that inside our shop under like these really powerful lights and see if I can get a tomato in like May. Because normally it takes us a while to get our first tomato. So I'm excited about trying that out. Yeah, people. You, everyone's discovered gardening. You know. Uh, I think it was people were already discovering, oh, I want to grow my own food because I want to know what's where it's coming from. But then, of course, you know, COVID really pushed everyone that way. But some people just have very small spaces to garden or even a patio. And that's what I like about so many different um, tomato varieties that are coming out that they're they're small. They produce fast. They're easy to grow. Um, oh, absolutely. And so, you know, some of these some of these like. Like I'll just mention like the the baby butternut. Um, it produced so early for me and it produced on a fairly small vine, too. So people who are like, oh, I can't I can't grow that. You know, they could put a, a, you know, a half wine barrel on their patio and just let it trail down and they'll have, you know, so much produce. And, you know, they last for quite a while off the off the vine. So I, I imagine you guys are trying to test all these different varieties for all different types of gardeners. Absolutely. I mean, it is for, to your point, right? About everyone's tried their green thumb during COVID. 
um, you know, I got a lot of the questions about, well, what should I start with, right? Where do I start? And, you know, my first question is, well, where are you growing, right? What kind of space are we talking about? Um, that helps us understand what you, what you're going to grow. But we saw, you know, so much interest around, um, lettuce and greens. And, and that was, you know, a, a good, good start for beginners. Um, you know, our, um, our mini romaine um, lettuce seeds did um, so well and microgreens. I mean, I think there's just so much um, with that new gardener where they're trying um, trying their thumb at, a, at these seeds, but it is first, where are you growing and do you have the space and how can you start? Uh, how can you start small and then continue to expand and um, add things, you know, that makes sense for where you're growing. I, we talk about tomatoes a lot. Our customers love the, you know, the park swapper tomato, mm. um, but tomatoes, you, you don't, and Dale and Carrie, you may have a different perspective, but tomatoes aren't a starter, uh, starter seed for me, at least I haven't, you know, when I started growing and I'm still learning, but tomatoes weren't what I started with. I started with greens. Yeah, I fully agree with that. But I will say, though, that the cherry tomatoes are much easier to grow than the other ones. Yes, yes. So I always recommend for beginners to start with the cherry tomatoes and then work their way up. And did I read something? Because as soon as you say cherry tomatoes, I think of sun gold. But isn't there a new, is there a new hybrid coming out? Did I read that? There's a new cherry tomato that we saw that we ordered and we're trying. Okay. I, I saw that it was a cherry chocolate Oh, chocolate. okay. Yes. Okay. Yes. The kids are very excited about that one. Yes. I well, the name of it. They were sold. Yes. Anytime you put chocolate in a word, it even it even yes. fools me. Okay. I'm even fooled. I'm like, ooh, chocolate bell pepper, chocolate tomato, oh, chocolate. Here. Okay. And then, you know, then I'm like, okay, did I really think it was going to taste like chocolate? Come on, Marlene. Tastes like chocolate, <laughs> right. Yes. So I have I have one question because, you know, you're talking about, oh, where do where do people start? And, um, you know, I was just clicking around on various plants and I was looking at the pests and stuff. But for me, obviously where you're going to grow. But soil is key. Is that in the app yet of how people could amend soil or is that planning on being in the app? I mean, that's so personal, I know, because. You know, your soil is so specific to where you're at. And even within your garden, there's different soil types. But um, do you guys have um, an area for soil amending, prepping, or is that um, in the works? We do. We recommend the square foot gardening uh, Mel's mix, mix of peat moss, vermiculite, and compost, or, or coconut core. And, um, you know, you can substitute that out for other things. But and, and we do have that information on the app. If you go to the articles tab okay. in the far right, and then there's a getting started tab within there. And that's a collection of articles that are for four people that are just starting out. And that top one of how to start growing for your own food in four easy steps describes how to make the Mel's mix and has videos showing us how or showing how we, we make it in our garden um, by buying materials in bulk from local places and then mixing it ourselves and saving money making that. So the key for us is compost. So we try and get five different compost sources. We make our own compost. We're on a farm now. So we're, I've got llama poop and rabbit poop and <laughs> sheep and goat and all of it. So, I mean, I'm, I've got some really good stuff now. So, but when we lived in the city, we had rabbits. We had giant Flemish giant rabbits that made a whole lot of poop and they were our pets. And so like, that was how we got our compost when we lived in the city. But we've always just been big about compost, and we talk about that quite a bit. If you look through our content, you'll see us talking about compost here, there, talking about how we make it, or everything we do is in season. We're just showing what we're doing in our garden. So um, that's how you can kind of that's how we shoot all of our stuff is we're just literally showing what we're doing with our garden and how we how we grow food and how we eat it. So I, I'm obviously I'm missing out. All I have around me are my cats, my rescue cats, and that was not on your list of all the manures that you use. So bummer. <laughs> no, can't do cats. No, I know. They, unfortunately, they are considered sort of filthy animals. But yeah. uh, <laughs> but I we did have a worm bin also, yeah. and the kids loved helping with that. Oh, did they? That was always okay. fun. We would yeah, we would put all of our food scraps and you in know. our junk mail. We would run through yeah. a spreader. So yeah, maybe that's not worms. Worms. and yeah. I and I'm sure if 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 I'm not wrong, I think Park Seed um, probably sells those worm 
like the tower worm bins. I'm pretty sure that's to do your um, your worms. Is that we correct? sell a number of options to support that. Um, I can't speak specifically on the worm bins, but I I could take a look. Yeah, no, I think I think I remember seeing seeing that, and I I actually had a a. a um, I visited a worm farm for these TV segments that I do. And then I had a uh, a person who did uh, worm composting, was trying to get it into schools. So I have appreciation for worms. So I had one in my, in my house for a while, but I did let it get too wet and I had too many gnats. So I had to move outside. <laughs> Time to go outside. <laughs> yeah. So um, I do, since, you know, I'm I'm a gardener and I'm always nosy about other people's gardens and that's just usually where I go to, but uh, Dale and Carrie, what what are your biggest challenges on your in your garden? Um, what are some things that you want to grow, and how are you expanding your garden? Or if you have time, or if you're just gonna now that you're so busy with this, just try to maintain the size. So, I mean, this is part of our job now. So I think it's going to allow us to, I mean, we, we have to make sure that we're, <laughs> that we're doing a good job of the garden because that's that's all of our marketing content, right? Which is how we felt for a while, but now that's a year-round operation. We can't take the winter and the summer off anymore like we did for a while. So, you know, for us, like, and also just having the extra time of not having another full-time job that we have to manage makes yeah. it where we have more time to keep the garden. So, you know, but so for us, we're going to be expanding significantly, but we don't want to lose mindset of what someone that doesn't have that situation is able to do. Mm -hmm. We, you know, and what we were able to do back when we had that. So we're going to be filming um, a lot of content about a little test garden where we're building raised beds of all different materials and also having a smart pot so we see how stuff grows next to each other we're showing that kind of stuff so that people can see on their own you know what kind of decisions they want to make about what materials they want to use to raise beds and how long things last and but for our own personal garden we're going to be expanding a lot um just because we're trying to grow my goal is to is to grow every variety that park has uh, i love okay. collecting <laughs> i've always been ocd about collecting and yeah. So we've got we have a, a seed starting station in our shop that has eight rows, or eight trays, or eight 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 shelves that have four trays each of uh, of starts going. So we've got a lot of starts going, and uh, we're going to attempt to grow all of it. So we're going to be expanding significantly mm -hmm. in our garden. When do you, um, when, the, do you when do you put your ahead. tomatoes in the ground back where you're at? When sort of like um, a sweet spot. So we we cheat it because we we plant most of our tomatoes in smart pots. Mm, so okay. we put them on a pallet, and then I use a pallet, a manual pallet um, jack, to move them outdoors on the days it's nice. And then when we get those random cold fronts, I move them back into our shop. So I start early, but they're not outside outside all the time until about April fifteenth in Oklahoma. Okay, that's that's you know that's sort of the sweet spot for us we could of course plant you know people plant beginning of march but there's always a chance of that frost but um so what are these smart pots i don't know what those are so these smart pots are fabric raised beds there's uh, a number of other brands. okay the smart, the smart pots are the original ones they're Got made it. here in oklahoma that's how we originally but yeah they're they work really well I, i'm a big fan of them okay so yeah, the beauty is that they are movable so that way like even if you did just have a single plant you can move it in and out like if there's a hailstorm or if you have a late frost got it okay so they're the fabric pots which yeah people really like because they're light they're collapsible you could store them yeah that's that is nice because people are like what am i going to do with all these giant pots i don't have a place to store them so that's nice that the um and then you can move them like in and out, like you said, to sort of um, harden them off. Um, but OK, April 15th, that's that's sort of where I aim to every year. I say, oh, I'm going to plant a little bit earlier, um, but I'm always like, oh, hesitant. When do you put your peppers out? Peppers are later. That's I'm watching the temperature. I'm waiting for nighttime temperatures to be above 55 every single mm -hmm. night and then in the forecast. So. Pepper, because once peppers get stunted, they don't recover super well, and then you end up with these shrivelly little things that yeah. don't really give you much. So, yeah. 
Yeah. Uh, so I'm real careful on my peppers, especially the hotter the pepper, the more careful I am on it. But again, I'm growing all those in our shop and, and smart pots. Like our shop is pretty much dedicated to plants or <laughs> hatching baby chicks. You might as well it. just call it a greenhouse now, but what, you know, know. Or, or a grow house instead of a shop. It's a grow house now. OK, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So you are you're expanding you're expanding the garden. Um, what what do you think is your biggest challenge in your garden you know, because everyone has like that one, you know, like, oh, this is this is my biggest challenge, whether it's a certain weed or it's gophers um, as I raise my hand um, or is it change each season? I feel like I'm taking the easy answer here because it's squash bugs. I mean, oh. they are the hardest test for us here in Oklahoma. OK, uh, no matter what you do, they're eventually going to take over. You just have to make sure you plant squash in a lot of different places. Um, so it's, it's always a battle with squash bugs, them and the squash vine borers, those mm -hmm. two work together. Um, those are the hardest ones. All the other pests I feel like I can handle just by paying attention to my plants, but, um, you know, you, you let it go for one week with squash bugs and it's over. Yeah. Yeah. We, we, we don't have the, the vine borers. I've never experienced that here. Um, and then we do have some squash, um, the cucumber beetle. Last year was new for me, um, but I'm adding nematodes. And, and I'm glad to see that you guys actually um, are promoting nematodes, beneficial nematodes, because that's where Absolutely. a lot of that's where a lot of these controls are at. And people sometimes hear nematodes and they they automatically think root not nematodes of tomatoes. Uh -huh. um, yeah. But beneficial nematodes are incredibly important for a lot of these pests. And of course, there's different, you know, uh, species of nematodes. But when I saw that, I was like, oh, good. You guys are you guys are on the forefront of uh, beneficials, you know. Um, so I like Thank that. You. <laughs> well, I mean, Thank you. I mean, it is. I mean, people, you know, ladybugs and lace wings and, you know, if you have a healthy garden, they're going to come there. But, you know, there's some some there's there's more that you can add to it. So. I like that. Um, so, Kelly, how involved are you going to be in the in the app or are you sort of just going to be a user of it as you learn how to garden? <laughs> oh, <laughs> I'm, I'm definitely going to benefit personally yeah. from the, the features built out in the app. I'll tell you that. Um, I am I am connected, Dale. Dale might say that's a good or a bad thing, but yeah, no, I am connected in. I. Um, Dale and I meet on a regular basis and I, I'm going, going to continue to stay connected. It is, um, it's a critical new channel for, um, for the Park Seed customer, current, future, um, you know, Park Seed customers and just gardeners in general. And Dale and Carrie and their team have such an amazing vision um, and there's no stopping them, right? What's in the app now and three months from now, you're going to see new features and three months from there, you're going to see more new features. And they have such a robust roadmap ready for this app and their energy is unmatched. So I stay close to it. Let's say I try to keep up with them. <laughs> better way to put it. And you have them, you know, on speed dial. So if you have even more specific garden questions, you could be like, well, I, I'm calling for this question. <laughs> yep. They are saved in my text message. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> for sure. So the app is available. Uh, sort of explain where people could find all the information on the app, where they could get the app um, and all that good stuff. Yeah. So if you go to our website at seed uh, two spoon dot net, or if you just search for From Seed to Spoon on Google, that should take you there. Our website has links to download it on both iOS, Android, or to use our web app, which okay. you can use in the browser, uh, which is nice sometimes. If you're going through and entering like maybe 20 or 30 plantings that you did that day, we like to use it in the web browser because we have full access to our keyboard and it's just faster. So it's nice having that available as well. Um, but it's available in all three of those app stores. If you just search for gardening, uh, as two of those app stores. If you search for gardening in either one of those, uh, you should find it near the top in either one of those too. If you can't remember uh, how to find it, or you know, but from seed to spoon will definitely take you there. And I, I, I have to ask: your last name is Spoonmore. Did that come into I, to the name? <laughs> I've never had a more eureka moment in my life. The day that I had that idea, and I was like, "I got the idea for the app," and I came in, and I was so excited. 
Um, so yeah, that was a hundred percent where that came from. Yeah. I'm always jealous of people who can make connections like that or have a name like that, you know? So it's like, oh, and I'm like, oh gosh, his last name. That's perfect. You know, <laughs> cause you hear everything from, you know, farm to fork. So I love that it's seed, seed to spoon. So I, I figured that was the case. Cause I'm like, wait a minute, am I, am I reading this right? Yeah. So <laughs> see, look at, you're just a natural born marketer right there. Right. <laughs> um, so, and the app's just going to continue to grow. And, you know, once people have the app, basically, you know, all this will just be updated, updated for them. Um, where on social media, because I I know you guys have a YouTube channel. What is the YouTube? Uh, the YouTube is also under From Seed to Spoon. Okay. Um, that's the, the handle on YouTube. We are also on Instagram and Facebook and Twitter. Um, we're not super active on Twitter, but if you follow us on Twitter, it is a good streamline of like our new videos and blogs and stuff like that. So if you just kind of want to keep track of that while you're on Twitter, um, but we're not replying to a lot of people on Twitter as of yet. So, but we do like spend a lot of time on Instagram and YouTube and those, the, and, and Facebook. Those yeah. are the three audiences yeah. that we interact with the most, but yeah, I'm, I'm an Instagram and uh, Facebook person and then because i always forget to ask i'm like oh yeah uh tiktok anyone <laughs> but, <laughs> not yet yeah no, we yeah. do we, not we yet. have some little well we do have some short little farm like funny farm videos okay. from our farm yeah yeah so if you want to see like cute animal funny videos oh, that's, where, that's, that's cute is. i mean baby animals come on you can't go wrong with that that's yeah, I we mean, love our pigs yeah they're oh, all pets that's right farms, your so. your picture in your um your uh zoom it's it's with a pig. <laughs> yeah, that's, my, that's my baby girl Mookie. Although she has her own babies now, oh. so I mean she's. You can't pick her up anymore. Yeah, but I can pick up her babies now. So, <laughs> so I just I just want to sort of leave um, by asking you each what sort of what your I guess goal and vision for and what would you like to see this app create or, you know, what you want gardening to achieve, um, just sort of your, your thoughts. Cause everyone gardens for, you know, their own certain reasons. Everyone wants, um, you know, people to garden for other reasons. Usually it's for what they, you know, why they're gardening, but, you know, just leave us with sort of your thoughts of what, what you hope this, um, the future of gardening looks like. So, um, uh, I feel personally connected to the goal of making it to where this app makes it easy for anybody that wants to grow food without having to think about how to do it or having to learn all the details. This app just walks you through. It has the information there too if you want to know it, but it just walks you through growing food so that more people become connected to growing food because I feel like if more people grew their own food and became more connected to nature and more connected to where their food came from, I feel like the world would be a better place. And that is something I can do with my life mm -hmm. that makes me feel fulfilled and gives me, you know, that's, that's the legacy I, I can, I can feel proud about. So that is, so with our app that everything we do moves towards that. So you're going to see things like the reminders, like the notifications for mm -hmm. when to, start seeds and when to fertilize and all that kind of stuff to take the thinking out of it yeah. and to encourage more people to take control of, of growing their own food and their own health. No, I agree. I, gardening, I tell people it shouldn't be stressful. You know, it shouldn't be stressful. So anything that you, you know, you could do to help people not make it a stressful thing, <laughs> you know, um, just the reminders. Yeah. That's really, we all need reminders and even, you know, if we've been gardening for years, that's still that, oh my gosh, I can't believe it's this month already. Wow. So that's, uh, yeah, I need reminders. And usually it's my plants telling me, help me, help me. <laughs> 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 Carrie, what do you, what do you sort of see? Well, I, I'd say it's along the same lines, but I, I try to include the kids in mm -hmm. as much as possible, not only for their benefit, but also we've had a lot of people reach out to us saying that they watched our video, you know, of me with my daughter outside and it got their kids excited about gardening because they saw other kids doing it. So I try to encourage, you know, as many kids as possible to get out there and learn where gardening and where food comes from and all that. And, you know, I think this app would be great for teachers and schools 
who were, who were, who were, you know, so many schools are trying to grow their own garden, but a lot of the teachers may not be experts or they may be learning as they go. Um, so this is actually a great app for schools to, to latch onto and just, you know, kids nowadays, they, you know, they could be in charge of, you know, entering all the data and being responsible for certain aspects of, um, you know, keeping their garden going and on the app. So, I mean, I think it, it, it's um, going to be useful for that. Absolutely. Even our five-year-old can navigate the oh. app perfectly. So. Oh. <laughs> it's oh. Oh. perfect for those, all ages. Those five-year-olds. <laughs> My gosh, they could outdo me. I'm like, what's wrong with my computer? Oh, here, my three-year-old will show you. I'm like, ah, okay. And uh, Kelly, what do you, I mean, I, I know you see yourself gardening more in the future, but, you know, I mean, you work for a, a you know, company that has been around forever. I mean, Park Seed is like one of the seed companies. I mean, that is the catalog I've been getting for years and years. It is like up there. I won't name any of your competitors, but it's up there <laughs> It's up there. Yes. Yes. I mean, this has been a brand that has been part of the gardening and growing journey forever. A very long yes. Time. It's crazy. I mean, that yeah. is a long time. It is a long, it is a long time, right? And this brand has been with generations of gardeners. And and that is really, you know, what is my one word? It's connection, right? It's connection or it's a bridge. That's what I want this to be. I want it to be a bridge or a connector from the past to the future, right? From, mm -hmm. from nature to your family, right? Like how do you connect that? How does gardening become that bridge from food and equity to empowerment and, and stability and food security? I think gardening can be that bridge or that connector. Mm -hmm. And as idealistic as that sounds, I mean, that's why I do what I do. That is the authentic connection I felt with Dale and Carrie in our first conversation of we are pathing to that same vision and goal. So let's come together and join on the journey, right? And, yeah. and move forward together. Yeah. Well, I'm just going to say kudos for you because it's great seeing one company that's been around for so long and two, seeing a company that's been around for so long that is keeping up with the times and realizing what people need and how they're how they're gardening and and you know technology so i think that's great cuz some companies you know are like nope this is what we've done we've always done it this way we're not going to yeah. you know here's our catalog that's it so you know it's like and, and sadly you know those companies may not make it but if you're keeping up with the times you're open to to how people are gardening how young people are gardening cuz that's where it's at i mean Really, we need the, the new generations of gardeners. We need those five-year-olds to be, you know, wanting to grow their own vegetables and, you know, their own flowers. So kudos for you for seeing that and going, how could we, um, you know, because I, I want to see Park Seed stay around because I love these old companies. I mean, everyone's heard of the Park Whopper, you know. <laughs> yes, everyone loves the Park Whopper. I know. For sure. Yeah. So, um, so hopefully, I mean, hopefully the listeners will be like, wow, this is just, you know, another tool I could use, or it could be the tool, um, you know, used to be going to, to books back when I was younger. And then, you know, the internet came out, but man, there is a lot of misinformation and there is a lot of, a lot of information and gardening is very specific to, you know, your zone. So, um, that's yeah, what I it's like about definitely this. hard. It's hard to tease through all of the information that's out there. I mean, that's a great point, Marlene, of like, how do you make sense of it? And that's what we're hoping the app can do. Mm -hmm. It's there. It's curated. It's personalized. It can be zone specific. Yeah. And um, I, it's there to help you. And I think that is key. That zone specific right there is so key because I garden in California. You know, you guys garden in Oklahoma. There's overlapping, obviously. But when you guys were talking about wrapping your cauliflower, I'm like, uh, what? <laughs> you know, because it's we grow it in cool season. I already harvested my cauliflower and that's it for the year. So, you know, and I know when I go to the app and I click that in, it's going to tell me where to plant it and, um, you know, when to plant it. So, no, I mean, good job for doing this, guys. Um, there's no way in heck I would have ever thought I'm going to develop my own app because I can't even remember the password to my computer. My husband's like, uh, you forgot it again. <laughs> so... 
<laughs> Good for you. So um, they can find the app. It's uh, Seed to Spoon. And like you said, it's on um, most um, three or two or three. Um, you know, I have it on my my iPhone and there's also the desktop and you guys are on all the social media. So any, any last parting words you want to say before we go wrap it up? Just thank you for having <laughs> us on today. I really enjoyed the conversation. Yeah, I, I love hearing about where people come from gardening. You know, that's what I love about doing this. It's 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 you know, I, I like incorporating the garden and, and the learning, but also it's almost, you know, the people's stories and journeys um, that are to me almost um, more interesting. So um, so everyone hope you enjoyed it as well. And until next time, happy gardening. <laughs>